special involving one of these. Now, have you ever had a cat in your neighbourhood that you've wanted to get revenge on, or perhaps there's a neighbour that you really don't like very much? I'm going to teach you how to make, using materials costing less than £100, a device which can send one of these 200 yards. But first, it's my duty as a responsible member of the BBC to point out that this can be dangerous. This should not be attempted by anybody under the age of 18 and the editors and publishers of Focus magazine do not accept any responsibility should you injure, kill or decapitate yourself or anyone else with this device. Right, that said, let's get it on and build it. Alright, so here's what you're going to need to build your potato bazooka. Um, first thing obviously is the good old trusty King Edward, available from all good fruit and veg stores. Um, and moving along, we've got some bathroom and kitchen sealant available from uh, most DIY shops, in fact, pretty much all DIY shops. You will also need some crimp on wire connectors, these are for your ignition system to actually fire your potato bazooka, and obviously some, uh, some crimpers to fasten those on. Then moving back, we've got the, uh, the spark generator that you're actually going to need to, uh, to detonate, to detonate or fire the potato bazooka. This is just a spark generator from a gas boiler. And uh, you can find details, by the way, of where to get all this stuff in the latest issue of Focus magazine. That's the August issue of Focus magazine, available in all good news agents. Now, um, moving on behind that, we've got some, some solvent weld cement, which uh, you'll see why that's important in a few minutes. We've got some wire and some insulating tape, again for the uh, ignition system. Um, there's a grinder attachment for a drill, um, again you'll see why that's important in a second. Various tools and odds and ends, tape measure, Stanley knife, screwdriver and, uh, and a hacksaw, you'll need all of those things. Um, then coming on behind we've got various sections of drain pipe tubing. Um, I actually struggled to get a few of these bits and bobs, um, but again you can find uh, all the information you need on where to get these in the magazine. Um, basically various, uh, various lengths and sizes which I'll go through in a minute, and uh, various adapters to uh, connect those to one another. So that's everything you need, let's go and build the thing. Okay then, so the first thing we're going to do is prepare our PVC connectors. Um, so these are 110mm downpipe connectors that you might use on a toilet downpipe in the plumbing in your house. And what I've looked for um, when I was buying these are connectors which can be solvent welded together. Basically I'm going to put glue on these surfaces here, solvent weld glue, and I'm going to fasten these together so that they make a really good solid bond. Now unfortunately I couldn't get solvent weld connectors on each end of these. These have actually got rubber push fit rings on. And if I leave these rubber push fit rings on, uh, when I push my sections together, it's actually going to take all the solvent weld glue off, which I don't want. So the first thing I'm going to do is to get rid of these rubber rings. And the way you do that, you just get a screwdriver, get your, uh, your little bit of pipe, just get a screwdriver in there like that, and lever out your rubber ring, and out it comes. And so you need to do that on all of your uh, drain pipe connectors before you start gluing them together. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is prepare our PVC pipe. What I've got here is uh, a piece of 110mm UPVC down pipe, the sort of thing you'd use in your toilet just to get rid of all the nasties and uh, take them down to the sewer. So what I'm going to do first of all, I'm just going to square the end of this off so I've got a nice, uh, a nice square joint to actually connect up. And what I've got to do that is, uh, is a cutting jig which you can get from most DIY shops. You just fit your piece of pipe in like that. As you can see, it's got lots of nice little slots in it uh, to make decent square cuts, which aren't going to just go all, all wonky. And I've just got a, a normal tenon saw to do the cut. Uh... So just turn it round a bit as you uh, run out of saw. Right, and there we go. One nicely squared off end. Right, so once you've made your cut, what you want to do is just take a small file, get rid of all this kind of swarf around the edge, because that's going to get in the way when you try and glue these things together. You might stop this making a really good seal when you stick the, uh, when you start gluing the various sections together. 
Right, now, this big pipe is going to make our combustion chamber. So we need a 40 centimetre length of this pipe, which I'm just going to measure off now. And so then we need to do that same process again, we need to cut this in the jig to make sure it's a square cut, and then file back all the uh, swarf and nasty bits, just to make a nice, uh, a nice end to, to glue into our other connectors. Okay, so once you've cut your length of pipe, I just want to give it a quick brush down to get rid of those last bits of swarf and stuff from the filing, so let me glue this in a minute. Right, now we're ready to do the gluing. And to do that, I'm going to use some solvent weld cement, which is the strongest way to glue together UPVC and uh, ABS plastics. Um, but it is really, really nasty stuff. I'm not joking. If you get this on your hands or uh, in your eyes, it can uh, really do you some harm. So I'm going to wear gloves, and I've got some goggles as well to, uh, to keep this out of my eyes so that, uh, so that I can still go on reading Focus magazine till I'm 80. Right then, first thing you need to do this has got all kinds of grease and gunk on it, so I'm going to use some solvent cleaning fluid, which smells almost as nasty as the actual solvent glue itself. I'm just going to get a bit of a kitchen towel. Now I'm just going to clean around the inside of this joint just to get rid of all the grease and gunk and other general nastiness, which might stop this making a nice good seal. The two bits I'm gluing together are going to form the, uh, the rear end of the actual chamber, the combustion chamber. This is kind of like a screw end stop, and this is an adapter to connect this onto the, uh, the combustion chamber pipe that we cut a moment ago. So I'm just going to give this a wipe around as well. This is the, uh, the other part of the uh, fitting that I'm going to glue together. Right then, ready to do the gluing. Goggles on. Now this is this solvent weld glue, and it should come in a little pot with a brush for applying it. And you really don't want to get this stuff on you, so I'm going to make sure I get most of the uh, glue off of the brush. And so that's still got enough on it to actually do any good. Then you just kind of paint this stuff on fairly liberally. And I can't stress strongly enough, you really do need to uh, open a window while you're doing this, or you're going to end up high as a kite. And I'm just going to put some on the inside of the socket that I'm connecting this into. This is just a piece of pipe connector, which I'm going to use to connect this uh, screw end stop into the, uh, the combustion chamber pipe that we cut a moment ago. What I'm going to do is fit these two pieces together. I'll fit them together with a bit of a, a twist just to make sure that's really, really tight. You need to be fairly quick with this as well because this stuff does dry pretty damn quick. Okay, then so just hold that together for a few moments. The thing to look for, you get a little bead of the, uh, of the solvent glue kind of squeezes out. If you get that, you know you've got a good seal and you've done a good job. is uh, come up with an adapter to fit this combustion chamber to the length I'm going to cut from this which is going to form the barrel that I'm going to take the receiver. Okay, so once you've drilled your bolts through and screwed them up from both sides, they should roughly meet in the middle just to leave a very, very small gap uh, which the spark is going to jump across. Yeah, I'm saying that you tend to flood it a bit, so thank you, Steve.